Welcome to the Sun Today for the 1st of March 2022. The question today is, will Solar Cycle 25 be huge? But first, let's take a look at the 24 hour summary of what's been going on on the Sun. This is what I posted on Twitter this morning. We have a sunspot number that's slightly increased to 64 and the average for the month of February turned out to be about 60, which is the second highest to date in Solar Cycle 25. In panel two, we can see that geospace is still relatively quiet and the solar wind is constant at about 530 kilometers per second. In the third panel, we can see the sunspots. There are five groups, two of which seem to be growing. That's 2956 and 2957. And I think there's a hint that 2958 is also starting to establish stronger spots. So we'll have to take a look at that in the future. In the panel below, we have the GOES X-ray flux. It's increasing slowly over time. We've had no large flares in the last 24 hours. So we've got only a few more hours of today to have a, a C1 flare or better if we're gonna maintain our string of days with a flare. It's been 80 days since the last spotless day, getting awfully close to that record. And as I say, we've had two consecutive days with the flare and we just need one today to make it three. There were some nice coronal mass ejections yesterday. And here's a movie showing the Lasco C2 events. There's three of them, one faintish one off the east limb, then a really nice one off the southwest limb, and then an even bigger one off the southeast limb. There'll be three repeats. Well, is Solar Cycle 25 going to be a huge cycle? Well, let's take a look at the data and see what it says. This is the most recent picture of the sunspot number from the SIDC, the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium, the World Authority on Sunspot Numbers. There are several curves here, so I should explain. The yellow is the daily sunspot number. You can see it's highly variable. The blue is the monthly average sunspot number, which is what we'll be dealing with today. And the red is the smooth sunspot number, which is a sunspot number smoothed over 13 consecutive months. But the interesting thing here is that the February value is the second highest so far in solar cycle 25. And you have to go back nearly seven years to find an equivalent value of sunspot number in the previous cycle. However, the interesting thing here are the models, the so-called SC and CM models. The CM model tends to be a conservative model. The SC model tends to be an optimistic model. And you can see that they are covering a very, very large range, something like between 120 and 230. Now 120, the lower value estimate here, is about the same as the peak of solar cycle 24. And 230, the, the SC number, is much higher than many of the previous cycles. So that would imply that in fact, we are going to get a large cycle. But note, neither of these show the maximum of the cycle. This ends in 2023 and solar cycle 25 is supposed to peak in year 2024 or 2025. So the peaks of these may well yet be a lot higher than the models are showing. Well, let's take a look at what these models predicted just one month ago. Here is the, the equivalent plot taken on February 1st of 2022. And you can see that the CM model and SC model are much, much lower, covering a range of between 75 and 120. Now the SC at 120 would be about equivalent to solar cycle 24. But again, neither of these go through to maximum. So it would imply that solar cycle 25 would be slightly larger than solar cycle 24, which is the same thing as NASA and NOAA were predicting. 75 would be much, much lower. So why the sudden change in the models? Well, February was a very active month. It produced the most new sunspot regions of any month so far in solar cycle 25, shown here in orange. It was also very productive from a flare point of view. It was the second highest flare rate that we've seen so far. 
This makes now 13 consecutive months with at least a C flare in them and eight consecutive months with at least an M flare in them, shown here in, respectively in green and yellow. As I mentioned before, the thing to note here is that February only has 28 days, so these numbers could be, say, 10% higher than they're showing here. So is it time for the grand solar minimum advocates to start to panic? Well, they certainly seem to be getting desperate. There was a marvelous instant just the other day where grand solar minimum news was trying to persuade us that you can get cold periods in Ohio in January during solar maximum because there are sunspots opposite the Earth, uh, which of course is blithering nonsense. Uh, he didn't explain why it only affected Ohio, why when there's many other times when there are bigger sunspots opposite the Earth, we didn't get an equivalent cold period. And why he was talking about the maximum solar cycle 24 being in January of, uh, of 2014, when it was actually in April and there was much larger spots opposite the Earth then. So we should have had an even larger cooling period then, and we didn't. All the indicators seem to be against them at the moment. Sunspot numbers are rising fast, instead of going to zero as they claimed they would. Uh, flares are becoming bigger and more frequent. Again, they didn't uh, predict that. Uh, and lastly, there are some very big coronal mass ejections recently. So all of the activity indicators are going the wrong way for a grand solar minimum. So they're going to have to change their t-shirts from grand solar minimum possibly to grand solar maximum. So what can we conclude from all of this? The predictions of a weak solar cycle 25 seem to be proving to be wrong. Activity signs are increasing, not decreasing. And for all of you, the increase to solar maximum over the next few years will be a fun time to be observing the sun. So I hope you'll join me in doing that. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please pass it on to others. So until next time, stay safe and goodbye.